I've been pretty bad about posting to my second channel, uh, specifically the Virtual Wolfie one, which is the VR gaming channel. And the reason I've been pretty bad at it as of late is I've been having difficulty with my VR headset, specifically my whole setup. You see, unlike a traditional Oculus Rift setup, because of the fact that I need full body tracking, I've got a bunch of these, which are vibe trackers and a Rift S. And you may already be seeing a bit of a problem. Vibe trackers and the Rift S don't necessarily work together very well. And you are correct. But there are other problems that need to be addressed before we can really synchronize the two of them. And today I'm gonna to show you how I fixed it and got it working. Hello, welcome, my name is Wolfie and you, you're watching Greater Than Pi. So, what is the problem? Well, the issue is that while my vibe trackers and my headset are plugged in, they have a tendency to actually disconnect each other. I'll lose one tracker during the process of a recording, which I could blame on the fact that I am moving around like an absolute lunatic. The fact that it just kind of disconnects and doesn't reconnect is very vindictive of a USB issue. Now I did do a video talking about adding an add-in card where needed to avoid this problem. And it does sort of work. And that works with the Vive trackers. If I have all of them plugged into that card, it works perfectly. But the problem is the headset has to also be plugged in somewhere. And the headset doesn't like to be plugged into that card while the Vive trackers are plugged into that card. Which means I'm back at square one. The issue is I also have to extend my headset outside of the normal range, as my desk is in the back of a bit of a pit that has tables on all four sides, and my play space is, well, this is my play space area. It's actually pretty big. It's lots of room, but I can't put it closer to my PC. The problem is my computer and my desk are all the way back here. So with my play space way out there and my headset tethered to way back there, I'm not exactly in a position where I can just run it raw. So we're definitely having issues. And any type of movement on the connector will cause the headset to just straight up disconnect. Now, the simple answer would be to upgrade the headset. I mean, you could always go with a Oculus Quest, which doesn't need to be tethered. But the problem is, while this headset is awesome and I this is Gamer Guts's. <laughs> and I relinquished this one when I bought the Rift Test to Gamer Guts. The problem is I do full body tracking, which requires PC VR, which would require me to connect to USB-C. And I've had my own issues with the uh, Quest and the USB-C cable staying connected. Now, there is now AirPlay, which didn't exist at the time. But when it comes down to it, I mainly play my VR headset in a PC VR environment and kind of could care less about having a battery that can die on the headset while I'm playing. It's not uncommon for me to actually play two hours at a time. In fact, I actually tracked a VR workout so that went for two hours before I even realized it and I regretted it the next day. So just know it's, it's something that does happen, but something like a Valve Index would be, I'd be able to get everything onto the same ecosystem. Problem is the Valve Index for a base set costs somewhere around $600 for the controllers and the headset if you've got base stations and which I did have to buy base stations when I bought the Vibe Trackers. As you can see, we've actually got a very complicated setup. We've got base stations, we've got Vibe Trackers, we've got the Rift S and there are two pieces of software that need to communicate with each other and the main issue that I'm running into is that I can't keep the headset connected, which is then causing one to fail out, and that is preventing me from actually using it. So my initial idea for this was actually um, very Linus Tech Tips. You see right behind me, we've got that blank space on the wall. And I literally thought about buying fiber optic cables like the ones that Linus uses to get his computer from one place to another inside his house. I thought about doing that, running them along the top over here and having a breakout box right over there. And then I thought, 
Well, that's actually a stupid idea because I don't even have to go that far. But we really need to figure out why the headset is disconnecting. And well, let's just say I tried a couple different things. I actually made a poll uh, that you guys voted in to see which one was the solution. I did reinforce the cable. Uh, there's this lovely bit of gaff tape right here that is holding this cable in a way that this cannot move and it prevents this from yanking on this piece right here. I also have cable ties right here so that when in position, they hold the cable in a way that it's not creating force. That did not work. Plugging in to USB 3.2 actually caused the headset to completely not work at all. Just didn't work, didn't want to try anything. It just was like, nope, I'm not taking this, which was really weird because you would think that with the higher bandwidth, then it would be fine. So that made me think maybe we could just put it in the add-in card and that worked, but only when the vibe trackers weren't plugged into it and the vibe trackers didn't like working with the PC's USB ports. Admittedly, another solution would probably be to actually get a different motherboard and see if maybe that helps since this motherboard seems to be having an issue with power delivery, but there is a cheaper solution that did work. I added a powered USB hub. This one is a Sabrent one. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty slick little thing. It's got individual little buttons right here. It plugs in via a barrel plug. And I could use the same USB extension cable that goes between the PC to the headset like it used to, to get this thing all the way over here. And then of course, connecting power is as simple as just a nice little extension cable. It, it didn't take that much work. But now with everything plugged in, it's time to test to see if it actually works. All right, everything's hooked up. The headset is plugged into the extender. Let's make sure it still works. Might be difficult with the lights, but hey, oh, it is actually brighter in the room outside than it is in the VR headset. That's, that's a different experience. Wow, it's the best it's been in a long time. Oh my goodness. And as you can see, it does. Not only does it work, but it seems to be working better than it has in a while. In fact, another issue that I didn't even know that this was going to fix was that the audio on the Rift S has a popping issue on both the microphone and the actual headset itself. I've actually been using a pair of Razer Black Sharks as my primary VR gaming headphones not because they are the best, but because they avoided that issue instead of using the audio through the cable. I thought that I had completely borked something up, but it turns out, no, the headset just wasn't getting enough power. Which then brings me to the question of why isn't this on the Oculus support page? Because it's not. It, it just tells you to replug everything in, reseed cables, try a different port, but never once does it mention possibly introducing additional power into the chain. And that does rub me the wrong way a little bit because the Rift S did kind of get led out to the pasture like old Yeller. You know, they, they did abandon it for the most part once they had the Quest, which the Meta Quest, still Oculus in my mind, but still. Once the Quest came out, they pretty much dropped the Rift S entirely, which is really sad because, well, the Rift S is PC VR and it's actually really good. But now that the headset's working, and everything seems to be working properly, does it work with the vibe trackers? And how do we get this to work together? The answer is yes, it does. In fact, to get these to work together, you're gonna just need something called a play space calibrator. I've used OBR's play space calibrator, and then I've also used this one, which is attached to a piece of software called Natural Locomotion. Now, in a video that I did do about walking in VR using a technique similar to like an omnidirectional treadmill by just walking in place, I did use this software and found that it was actually really good. And the play space calibrator is a little bit better than OVR play space calibrator as this version doesn't need to be calibrated between sessions. Yes, it actually saves your play space and calibrates it to the headset and not to Steam, which I think OVR does do, which is why the headset and the vibe trackers have to be recalibrated every time you reopen up Steam VR using the OVR version. That being said, is this a perfect solution? No, 
because, well, they're not naturally tracking on the same plane. They're sort of working, and it works well enough, but the inevitable and final solution to this problem will be to replace the headsets. Problem is, I don't have the money to do that. <laughs> More importantly, to upgrade my existing VR setup, I am going to have to change the base stations. I have HTC's base station 1.0s, and those were available when I bought my Vibe Trackers. Problem is, currently speaking, uh, they're not, <laughs> and I would need at least one more, if not two more, to run the Valve Index properly and comfortably. Now, could I use just two? Probably, but I'm figuring I'm just gonna, when I do have enough money for it, I would buy the base kit that comes with two of the 2.0 trackers and then buy an additional two 2.0 trackers, even though that's like an additional $400. The point is, I would either have to do that or go on eBay and find more version one trackers, which might even be doable. I'm not even sure. These things are fragile though. It's, yeah, it's its own problem. That's for me to figure out, but that's upgrades. That's not getting it working now, but now, it's working. It's working well, and it honestly baffles me that the solution is adding more junk into the chain. Side effect, because of the hub that I have, I actually am able to plug my Vive trackers into charge right next to the computer. That's actually a decent thing because uh, they only came with one micro USB cable. So I had to buy a bunch of micro USB cables, but hey, they're not that expensive. The ones I bought were, but. No, it's because I decided to do this on a whim and went to Staples. Also, uh, free tech tip, if you need cables, don't go to Staples ever, like ever. They're just overpriced there. It was convenient, I made a mistake. But that's where we're gonna end today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, maybe consider giving it a like, comment, subscribe. I do experiments like this all the time, and sometimes I come up with solutions for you guys. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, consider it. Uh, if not, I do do tech reviews. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a review on the 6700 XT very soon. Do PC builds, keyboard builds. Uh, yeah, I do a lot of different things. So if you stuck around to this far, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. Wolfie, out.